This is a simple beat that I've created uh, in Ableton Live. You can take a look at it here. Uh, and it's a good sounding beat, but like all loops, uh, if I leave it running for too long, it's gonna be boring. And we want to avoid boring in our music. Um, although, uh, you know, something that's fairly static with a little bit of variation can be really beautiful in the right context. Typically, uh, just repeating the same thing over and over again uh, is not so beautiful. Uh, and so I like to find ways to bring some uh, measured randomness into my beats and into my loops um, and randomness that preserves or enhances the groove uh, and isn't just randomness for randomness's sake and so I'll show you a way that I've done that uh, with this groove um, and I'll yeah I'll just walk you through the process uh, using some of Ableton's own devices and some Max for Live devices. Okay, let's take a look. So this is the MIDI clip. And I am quite fond of it. I do like it. Uh, but like I say, it's going to get tired pretty fast if I just leave it running like this. So let's see what we can do with it. We'll just... Oops. So I'm using Reactor's Polyplex drum machine, uh, but this will work with any drum machine um, or samples or whatever. Uh, the effect is, uh, is more about the randomization that we add than the specific sounds that we're using. So I'm using Gorilla Glide within Polyplex, but like I say, you can use anything you like. So I'm gonna start, um, I've collected together under tutorial here all of my all of the things I'm going, I'm going to use. Um, and we're going to start first just with the randomizer effect that comes in Ableton Live. And you can find that under MIDI effects. Uh, in this case, I'm using the, the blue preset, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to alter it for my own liking anyway. So we'll drop it in here. And what this does, it doesn't change the, the placement of the notes, it changes the pitch. So in drum terms, that's it changes what sample it's going to select. And so that adds a little bit of variation in terms of sounds and timbres. I like to give it a little more chance and push the choices a little more. It's worth noting too that one of the techniques that makes this work is uh, that I'm using a drum machine that only you only has eight sample slots and so when randomizer chooses to cho to play a note um, Outside of the note values for these slots. It's just silent and so silence is music and uh, I think it it works really well Okay, nice little uh, hi-hat shuffle there. Okay, so this is great uh, but it's not changing the timing any, of any our, of our notes. So that's maybe the next thing that I want to do. And I'll start with very subtle changes with a device um, called the Max Humanizer. And the Max Humanizer works by offsetting the uh, start of a MIDI note, the MIDI on, MIDI note on event, um, and delaying it. Uh, it doesn't delay every one of them. It just randomly delays certain notes and uh, it does that in mi measured in milliseconds. So I'm going to give it about 10 milliseconds. Uh, if I can see, it's awful hard to see that because I've chosen the dark theme on my on Ableton. So all that's going to do is just kind of humanize the feel of it a little bit. And you can go more, you can push it a little bit more if you want. Um, it's really a matter of feel. It's really up to you. So that's that's cool that works quite well the next thing i want to do is bring in an empty midi effects rack and i think this is where the magic happens for me um, i'm going to create two, two chains in here and uh, we'll label them just for good measure we'll call this one dry because that's just oops drew 
dry because that's just going to pass the un or pass the MIDI notes through. The top one will rename delay. And as maybe you can guess from that name, it's going to have a delay on it. But I'm not going to start with the delay. I'm going to work backwards. First of all, there's an, uh, a Max for Live device called the LFO uh, MIDI. And what that is is uh, an LFO, which is a really handy device uh, because it can be mapped to parameters on Max for Live or Ableton devices, which is exactly what we're going to do. Well, first, we're going to set it to, to sync to the beat of the piece. Uh, we'll select eighth notes, which I found is about the right value for this, but uh, your mileage may vary. You can try other things. What's really important here is that we choose random, and this will become evident when I hook it up to the next device. Uh, but suffice to say for now, what random does is it only outputs a full on uh, randomly. So what I can use that for is to switch devices on and off in random places. And so that device will be the Node Echo, which is another uh, Max for Live device. It essentially does for MIDI what Ableton's uh, basic delay device does for audio. Drop that on there. And okay, so right away, by choosing delay time three, that's a groovy delay but we don't want it on all the time because that would definitely overdo it. So what I'm gonna do is map the LFO's output to on and off. Okay, now we're getting a groove. Yeah, yeah. I love this technique. Uh, I stumbled upon it. <laughs> and I think it really does a great job of producing uh, usable pieces of very groovy, randomized drums. Now, I wouldn't use this effect uh, in my track. I would record this into audio and then chop it up and select the chunks that I like best from it. Um, just want to make sure we've done everything here. Well, I've got a drum a bit, uh, drum bus effect. So for sure the drum bus could go on here. Oh, actually I've got drum bus on here already. And another effect that you could put on, and you could also switch on and off with a, a LFO would be beat repeat. So let's try that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to just improvise a little bit here. I'm going to see what happens if we pop an LFO one here. All right, let's do the same thing. Let's put it on random and let's uh, let that random effect just map it to grid perhaps hmm strange there we go <laughs> Okay, so there's a problem there, I think, is that our depth is too hot. There we go. And let's just uh, set that to sync and drop it in around something like at one sixth, maybe. All right, well, uh, you could leave it there or you could pop over into session view. Oops, that's not session view, not session view. And you could add a uh, audio track 
Uh, why, why do they include brown as one of their track colors? I'll never understand. Let's make it something not brown. There we go. Okay, so take the in from glitch drums. And let's just uh, set up, let's just grab a chunk of this here. Yeah, I like that. So, op all the options are open to you. If we take that uh, and we just grab this and loop it, we could loop this uh, and just let's hear what that sounds like. Now that's got enough variety in it that you could chop pieces up and use them. You could uh, just play that behind your track, depending on the nature of your track, and repeat that four times and then go back and do it again and get some more material to be variation to um, as you work on kind of from a theme and variation sort of perspective. That's one way, or you could go in and just start doing some chopping. Uh, very quickly, you would simply Let's just zoom in here. Oh. Let's zoom in here. Ah, there we go. I'm so used to. There we go. Okay, so there's a good kick, right? Maybe you take that and you plop it in here. You plop a couple of times. Right? And then you maybe go in here and grab this and let's just hear what we got we got nothing because i turned it off but let's uh <laughs> let's go just maybe take a little more we could just grab this chunk for now and see what we get Maybe we take a uh, take this, copy it, pop it in at the end, like this, and we go. And then we uh, duplicate that and let it run out like this. See what we get. There we go. Yeah. I would definitely use that on a track. That's got a nice groove. And that's the technique. It's uh, not complicated, but it yields some really great results. And it gives you lots of raw material that's within your groove. And I think this is what's really important about this technique is that it gives you material that stays within your groove for the most part, but just gives you enough randomization to really sound interesting. And I find it very interesting and I'm actually working on a track right now that uses this technique and I can see myself using it a lot. I think the next step for me and, and what I would encourage you to do is try this with different sounds. Uh, try to figure out which context it works for and which ones it doesn't. And uh, and also, you know, that since this is a device, you can put these together inside of one rack, I've got them inside of several racks, but, and save it and use it as a drum rack uh, idea that you can drop into new tracks and, and uh, tune for that. And of course, going from there, what else could you do? You could, you could play a piano with it instead of playing <laughs> you know you could uh, do a number of things uh, actually playing a piano with it sounds like a cool idea play a piano with it use a scale device to constrain it to a specific scale and see what happens anyway i'll leave that up to you to try uh thanks for 
watching. I hope this is helpful. If you do find it helpful, leave a comment below. And uh, if you like this kind of material, subscribe to my channel and like it and all the other YouTube stuff you're supposed to do. And I'll be uploading more stuff like this as time goes by. All right, thanks.